Good afternoon and welcome to the Alternate Assessment Panel meeting of May 1st, 2008. This meeting is hereby called to order. Please refrain from talking among yourselves during the meeting and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones and pagers. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. The purpose of the Alternate Assessment Panel is to hear appeals from decisions of the Design Review Boards. This is a de novo hearing. Any decisions which may be rendered today will be based solely upon information presented at this meeting. Decision of the alternate assessment panel will be the final decision on the project. Thus, any appellant and application should present all the evidence which he or she may wish the panel to consider. The alternate assessment panel may, may sustain, modify, or overturn the decision of the originating design review board. Possible alternatives uh, assessment panel decisions are as follows. Approved, approved with conditions, deny, or continue to another AAP <coughs> meeting for additional information. A handout describing the procedures of the meetings and possible decisions is available at the table at the front door. Any decisions of the panel may be appealed to the council by filing a notice of appeal, appeal fee within the Permit <coughs> Services Center during the normal business hours within seven days of the panel's decision. The appeal fee is presently at $550. Public meeting will be conducted in the following matter, manner. Staff will present a brief overview of the project, including the action taken by the Design Review Board. Then the appellant or the appellant's authorized representative will give a 15-minute uh, <coughs> presentation on his or her <coughs> reason for the appeal. Then the applicant or the applicant's authorized representative, if not the applicant, will be given 15 minutes uh, to describe his or her project. Then any others wishing to speak in support or in opposition to the project will be asked to come forward and provide testimony. The speakers from the public will be limited to five minutes. The next applicant, if not the appellant, will be provided five minutes for rebuttal comments. Then the applicant will be provided five minutes for rebuttal comments. After all the speakers have made their presentations, the public portion of the matter will be closed. No further testimony will be given or taken and any member of the public, the appellant and the applicant, or the staff, unless specifically uh, requested or questions are directed by the members of the panel, or unless the chairperson reopens the public comment portion of the meeting. Once the public portion of the meeting is closed, members of the panel will discuss the particular matter and make a decision. Anyone who wishes to speak, including the applicant and the uh, appellant, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker's cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. You will be called to present or speak on the specific item indicated. If you are speaking for or against, or if your comments are neutral towards the project, please note this on your speaker's <coughs> card. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about the project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff to receive notice of subsequent meetings, if any. We're ready to begin with the agenda. I think we're ready for a brief staff comment. Actually, um, <coughs> board member Insua yes. and board members, if you don't mind, I think we would need to actually elect a chairperson at this point in time. Oh, so I may have to read that again? <laughs> you will not have to read it again. <laughs> Good. I'll move Just for the... record keeping. <coughs> I'll, right. I'll move Mr. Insua as chair for this assessment panel. And I'll second that. And all in favor? Aye. 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 That's so noted. Okay, um, I think we're ready for a brief staff. Brief staff, yes. Chairman Insua, board members, what you have before you is a case. Um, this would be an appeal of the Design Review Board case 2 PER 2006 22. Um, the project is located at 1340 Virginia Avenue. The applicant is Franco Naravian, and the appellant is Gerald Abrahamson. On January 17, 2008, the Design Review Board Number 2 reviewed the first proposal for final review for a new single-family home. The final review proposal consisted of demolishing the existing one-story, 2,001-square-foot single-family home and detached <coughs> garage and constructing a new 
3,403 square foot, two-story house with an attached two car garage on a 14,616 square foot lot. Um, as you see before you here, these were the plans that were submitted for the Design Review Board 17th, and here would be the colored elevations. Following a petition was signed by 16 neighbors in opposition to the project and a letter from the adjacent property owner to the south, Gail Erke, were received before the hearing. Following much discussion, the board voted to continue the project for two weeks in order to have the applicant enough time to provide a neighborhood profile accurately showing the proposed two-story home in relation to the existing adjacent homes on Virginia Avenue. And again, these were the plans that were submitted. This was the neighborhood profile that was submitted by Franco Naravian on January 31st, 2006, uh, 2008, I apologize. Um, in addition to this pictorial neighborhood profile, the applicant also provided line <coughs> diagrams showing both the street profile as well as a cross section of the home in relation to the adjacent property. On January 31st, again, the architect presented the streetscape po profile and the photo simulation. The architect also submitted on January 31st, late in the afternoon, a slightly revised project. The house went from columns with stone veneer and surrounds along the windows to a revised somewhat scale, and this was based on the discussion that the board had on January 17th regarding certain design aspects. The architect felt that the Spanish style home with simplified columns, the removal of the stone veneers, the wood trim surrounds, the wood shutters, and actually, and then you'll notice a bit best seen here on the profile, on the, both the front elevation and on the side elevation, the house on the second story has actually been set further back away from the street, thereby reducing the massing. So again, these were plans that were submitted late on the day of January 31st that were presented to the board at that date with slight alterations and massing modifications, <coughs> having a more Spanish style look as opposed to the preliminary Mediterranean look of the home as first presented. Um, following the architect's presentation and additional public testimony, the board voted to approve the project with the following three conditions. One, to maintain the existing hedge along the driveway and to replant the same type of hedge if the existing one was damaged during construction. And this would be the hedge located best, and as you see here on the plot plan, the hedge along the southerly property line adjacent to the neighbor that was going to be most impacted by the garage and the driveway. Second item was to consider including the previously proposed bay window on the front elevation. And the third item was to relocate the trash area. The board voted three to one. Um, this was again board member James Malikian and Zarifian in favor of the project and board member Carnahan against the project. The reasons cited by the board, the three supporting design review board members who voted in favor of the project included the quality and subtleness of the design, the intentional placement of the second story massing back from the first story elevation and further away from the properties, the neighbor's property to the south. And again, as you see here in this particular area right here, this is where the, drive, uh, the garage leading to the driveway is tucked further, even further back than front elevation. And there is no second story above the garage. This is the neighbor that was most impacted by the proposed development. So again, the massing of the project and that the driveway separation landscaping would further screen from the southerly property line. Um, board member Carnahan voted against the project. A, design, a DVD of the January 31st meeting date was included as part of your packet. Um, the, appell the appellant, Mr. Abrahamson, appealed the board's decision to approve with conditions stating that the design review board did not adequately consider the compatibility of this house relative to the houses in the immediate area. Mr. Abrahamson cited the following issues, the number or lack thereof of two-story homes in the area, the comparison of the proposed two-story heights, homes height and massing in regards to the adjacent one-story homes on lots with grade differentials, and again, 
Uh, as you so notice in the neighborhood profile, Virginia Avenue slightly slopes downward. And so the homes are on different building paths that, again, decrease in, in height along Virginia. He also cited the issue of privacy for neighboring rear yards and that the architect's presentation of updated plans on January 3rd, 31st without adequate time for review were insufficient. Now, the appellant statements also included on the notice of appeal um, a letter from one of the neighbors, Mr. Fessel, who had argued that the architect, uh, Franco Naravian, had misidentified the property as being in the Brockmont neighborhood when it is actually in the Glenwood neighborhood. If, um, if you recall or if you had seen the board's discussions on January 17th, and this was also mentioned again on January 31st, the board elected to continue with the design review board hearing knowing that although it was unfortunately misidentified in the first case, um, that the Glenwood neighborhood and the Brockmont neighborhood are both under the same single family design guidelines. And as you see here, they're both located within the same general neighborhood designations of a woodland neighborhood. So there is no other further distinction in the single family design guidelines between the Brockmont and the Glenwood neighborhoods other than being under the same umbrella. And obviously your decision in terms of assessing the compatibility of this particular project in relation to its immediate surroundings. That concludes staff's presentation. I'm available to answer any questions you may have. And I know both the applicant and the appellant are ready to give their testimony regarding this case. So this is the one that we are looking at today? This, is, this was the project that was presented for our review. However, this revised project was the one that was submitted by the architect on January 31st. And the board, board two, voted to go with this particular proposal. And this is the proposal that is being reviewed today by the Alternative Assessment Panel. And the second question, which landscape plan, just to confirm, or which site plan are we looking at today? The site plan is essentially the same with modifications to the interior, and forgive me for since it's further on down, there were modifications made to the entryway and the scope of the first story somewhat, and obviously the recessing of the second story even further back from the street setback. So the building location footprint does not has not changed. And so you'll see here before you, this would be the landscape plan that is for your review as well. Okay. I have a question. When you mentioned that the second story was set back further, that's this plan shows it already set back, right? Because it seems like they're the similar there's Actually, no difference in these two from a, just sitting here looking at it, or am I missing something? No, if you take a look here, you'll see that there's a hipped roof on the first floor. Right. If you follow the second, <coughs> second floor location, you'll notice here, and this is somewhat deceiving because the windows have changed as well. The second floor, if you take a look, and see, has been set back in the revised plans. So it has been further set back, and I'll double check on the, set, uh, on the plans the by Franco. I think not it's the perspectives. Right. You no, side elevation, if you take the a look at the elevation, so, so we had left more first floor roof the chimney right there, just peeking out through there. Yes, on that one, and that was fully exposed. Okay, I, I, I okay, so yeah, I see. Okay, that, that's the area you're see, talking about. Exactly. So, as you take out. here okay. in this particular elevation, back, well, back, back, or back, yeah, forgive yeah, me, that's yeah. okay. This is <laughs> right, right. I, I see that. Okay, I'm you see here, here's the chimney here. Got you. I see that, and then you have that additional setback right here right that's further and now is there something also on the side of the if i'm looking at oh yeah right okay I see it up well there. the elevation on both 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 side right. elevations you'd see that that this particular massing no i mean to, the, to the south side is set back also i see Correct. that now okay great both on the north and south obviously as reflected in the plans other questions for staff mm -hmm. thank, thank you, you. Okay. Uh, the applicant, or the excuse me, the appellant has 15 minutes, and I have here a gentleman named Mr. Gerald Abramson. Good. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah, 15 minutes, sir. Thank you. Um, the basis 
for the appeal is the compatibility. Uh, that's the primary. Secondarily, we think the uh, design review board, uh, particularly the second design review, should not have been allowed because documents were not presented prior to the meeting to give people a chance to look at them. And uh, I've worked as an engineer for a long time, and we do a lot of design reviews. And the way it works, I, I would think it would be the same way, uh, particularly in a final design review. You give a review date, uh, the person responsible for the design submits the plans some fixed number of days or whatever ahead of time, so anyone interested has a chance to review them. Uh, without that, you really don't uh, have a chance to adequately uh, question what's going on. And I, I really think architecture is not that different from engineering. I mean, it's more subjective, but uh, you're trying to do the same thing. You're trying to get a, a set of drawings ready to build. And uh, I, I really, most of us felt that the, the January 31st meeting did not give us adequate time for that. So that was, uh, those are the two reasons we appealed. Uh, to give you a brief thumbnail of this block, uh, the lots primarily are 72 by 200. They're quite large lots. The homes are quite modest in size. And as you walk along the street or drive along the street, you'll notice a lot of separation between the houses. And uh, quite frequently, you'll see great large trees growing throughout. It has quite an open look to it. It's composed, the average Glendale lot, I think, is 50 by 150. So things are naturally jammed together more. And we're quite used to and happy with the separation between the houses. We've liked it since we've been, we lived there. And we'd like to see that continued unless there's some reason not to. The applicant has chosen on two separate occasions, starting in 2006 and now this year, to present a house that is two stories uh, with an attached garage. He is in the middle of a group of seven houses, all single story, all detached garages. So now, in exactly the middle of that row of houses, you're going to have a two story, 28 foot house with an attached garage, which will leave you a fairly narrow 13 foot. Uh, gap between the, the the nearest downhill resident and the, the applicant's garage, which is far different than it is today. Uh, the height of the house will change uh, any view the uh, downhill owner particularly had. And we're really uh, question why the two-story house. With a 14,000 plus lot, you can put a 3,400 square foot single story building there, and then that uses up about 25% of the lot area. Uh, the reason for not having a, a detached garage is more obscure than that. Uh, the only thing, if you look at his plot plan, he'd have to sacrifice for a detached garage as part of a, uh, a flower bed and uh, to assist in staying compatible with the neighborhood. So the, the choice of the two-story house, the choice of the uh, attached garage seems extremely arbitrary to us, and it is not in keeping with the neighborhood at all. There is one two-story house on the block that's 200 feet plus separated from the applicant's house on the uphill side, that, app, that house does have a detached garage, uh, but th th the existing house is too far away from this one to help in transitioning it in any way. Another unfortunate thing with this particular lot, many of us have 50, 60-year-old trees front and back in our houses. Uh, that were the case, this house would transition a lot better than it will. Uh, I think it's really going to stand out just because of the circumstances I've mentioned. 
And obviously, the applicant wants a two-story house. And to us, it's really the wrong place. And in preparing the appeal on the short notice you're given, I tried researching. A friend of mine is an architect for about the last 50 years, and he gave me some websites to try to see how other towns and other cities handled this infill-type housing. And it turns out most of them do what Glendale does. They call for a compatible, which is extremely subjective for an engineer, which I am. I did find a few instances where the infill housing actually put some limits. For example, any infill house will be shorter than the tallest existing house, taller than the shortest existing house. So it would be within the range that you presently have. Another one that I found listed a 120% greater height than the average of the neighborhood. Well, our neighborhood would be 17 or 18 feet probably for the average height of the houses. Most of them are quite small, which would mean a 21 or 22-foot max in that particular city. I don't know how easy these things are to apply if you were actually in the circumstances you're trying, but it seemed in cities like Glendale where they're so far built out, we would try to have a little more defined way of discussing what the heights can be. And also, the word compatibility has me completely lost. Our January 17th meeting, I have an addendum to my original amendment, too. I described a major disconnect we had with the design review board. Prior to the applicant's case being heard, we had an applicant who wanted to change the texture of his house. It was siding or something, and he wanted to go to stucco and change the windows, as I remember it. Size was to be exactly the same. Shape was to be exactly the same. And the design review board rejected it because it was not compatible with the neighborhood. In our case, the applicant would be tearing down a 2,000-square-foot house, single story, detached garage, replacing it, two-story house, attached garage. You know, it's such a complete change that it doesn't seem the word compatible applies. We've had quite a number of houses in the area on our street that have gone through changes in the last 10 years. Four of them came to mind. Two of them were across the street from the applicant's house. One added approximately 800 square foot to the house. I think it's 28 or 2,900 feet now. And improved the look of the house. Didn't go to two stories. Just went back on the lot. It's a deep lot. And when he got done, he had really improved the lot. And the thing blends in perfectly with the neighborhood. Two houses up from that, we had a similar instance. Again, the house was modified quite a bit, you know, brought up to code as you have to do. And when he got done, very nice looking house, blends in perfectly with the neighborhood, still has a detached garage. And we're just tickled to death. These things happen. I mean, they improve the neighborhood. They blend in with everything else. And we would love it if everyone had changed the house there would do that. But that's not what's happening here. Our biggest beef with Design Review Board 2 was in the height of the house. This started two years ago. Same size house was proposed. And it was 28 foot. It's just about twice the height of the neighboring house, which at its closest point would be 13 foot away. 
no big trees, nothing, you know, to transition. And we said, that's really just too high for, for that particular area. Well, clearly, Design Review Board, too, didn't disagree with us, or didn't agree with us, they disagreed. But the part that was annoying is that this height was never addressed. Uh, during design review, the design review of the 17th of January, we were the only people who were talking about the height. The applicant, the architect, was mentioning that he was reducing the massing of the house and, you know, through the design. But no one actually presented roof outlines or anything like that, which when you're introducing a two-story house in the midst of one-story house would seem to me the first thing you did. And also, I was surprised the staff took all kinds of pictures of the street, but the staff itself never attempted a roof outline drawing to give an impact. And I would have think that would have been an obvious thing to do. I'm surprised it wasn't done. At any rate, in uh, the design review board on the uh, 31st, the architect presented sort of a composite drawing, if I can find it, that purported to show the relative height of this house with others around it. And I'm searching in vain. Hang on. I think we have one up here. Is that to the top right there? Section A8. Yeah, let me, I had this one marked up a little bit. Ah, yes. One of your drawings up there should look like this. Well, the house shown on the right, compared to this house, as you look at it. Sir, you're going to speak into the mic. You're blocking the microphone. Ah, uh, if, if you look at this, to the average non-architectural eye, the tall house does not look twice as big as this house. It looks much closer in height. If you actually put a scale on it, which I did, and uh, multiplied it out, the house on the right, the small house, would have to be 22 foot tall for this to be true. In fact, this house measures 15 foot high. So 15 foot with a two foot grade differential, the top of this house is about twice the height of this. And that's not obvious from this picture. Design Review Board 2 did not question this. Why, I do not know. But it's so darn obvious that uh, it's really not a fair representation of what's going in here. And I was quite disturbed by that uh, in two, on two levels. I was disturbed that, uh, first of all, the staff didn't present this information to start with because this is a large height differential. All the surrounding houses are one story. And I really um, think that was uh, something that was overlooked. I don't know what your average design review boards look like, <clears throat> but uh, I don't think facts were presented that should have been presented. We also had a beef with the introduction of new uh, material at the opening of the design review. Uh, we had no time to look at them. The, the, draw the photo I just showed you uh, was presented at that time. To the naked eye, you could tell it wasn't accurate, but I couldn't tell you how inaccurate. I didn't have a scale or anything I could measure with. Uh, so the chance to present an opposition view, view was basically abrogated. We simply couldn't do it. Not that I, I don't know if it would have made any difference, but I would have sure felt a lot better if I could have said what I just told you folks. Uh, instead, we just were sort of cruising along and uh, not paying much attention to any opposition point of view. Why you have a design review under those stand circumstances is sort of extraneous. And uh, I, I really think you can do a lot better than that. Um, I had some other, one other thing that we didn't really touch on in the uh, design review 
this house is proposed has a small balcony in my original note or appeal i said it's a small balcony since that time i had a chance to look at a this is another amendment there's a house being built on uh, highland by the same architect turns out i can see it from my uh, carport i can't see it from my house but i can from my carport well in the center here that is a balcony or a deck whatever you want to call it it overlooks three or four adjacent houses that have never been overlooked before and i would say is fairly intrusive uh, so initially in my thinking about this house i didn't pay much attention to that but having seen this house under construction i think that balcony would be awfully intrusive to the neighboring houses and I, when i watch my grandson and his friends uh, use their cell phones to send little pictures back and forth to each other i recognize how our privacy is going away every day and it seems to me of any time not to do stuff like this this would be a good time not to have a balcony but uh, the design review board too did not make an issue of this at all again i don't know why uh, i've seen other balconies in the glendale area some in front and some in back and uh, i don't get those either if, if they're located among one story houses i mean it just seems very intrusive to me and i can't really uh, I, I guess i just don't get balconies very well i mean i like patios i like that sort of thing but uh, uh, they have this tendency or the chance to be quite intrusive and i think the design review boards be well advised to take that into account the only place on our properties probably we have any form of privacy would be the backyard certainly not the front so we would i would tend to minimize the use of any balconies and the architect very wisely reduced the number of windows on the downhill side of this thing from his original plan and i commend him for that but once you have the balcony in place i think he's you know lost anything he gained by doing that so i think uh, in general uh, the presentation of the height was not done properly and i think also the uh, design review board did really not consider the things that were brought up to them such as the height uh, in a in the appropriate fashion you done that concludes your 15 minutes yes thank you very much thank you one thing I think I should do is read the um, PDR number which was never read in if someone wants to work so but this this is the appeal of the design did we read it in I actually started off my presentation with thank the you. number if you'd like to repeat it no you're no 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 <laughs> I just saw it there I thought someone may want to look this up later on okay well thank you sir okay the next person we're calling is the applicant and it would be Franco Navarian again this would be 15 minutes Good afternoon, board members. Frank Honoravi on 409 West Broadway, Glendale, California, 91204. I'm the architect for the project. Uh, you know, I, I do a lot of projects in the city of Glendale, and I, I know the importance of combat compatibility. And uh, that's why when my client first came to me, the first question I asked is I said, are there any two-story houses within 300 feet of your house? Uh, and he says, yeah, there's a big one, a uh, couple of doors down and um, the second question as I asked is how do you get along with your neighbors and he said love my neighbors they're great people um, so I said well then this shouldn't be a problem um, when I looked at the house uh, we're talking about 1360 um, Virginia um, and I saw it's a it's you have the pictures and you also have the neighborhood profile it's a massive looking house and I said well if I try to do this today there's no way I get approval on something like this next to one-story homes because it's it's really massive uh, it's a straight wall going up so um, but I can do something that that can be compatible by coming in from all sides and having roof lines and uh, pushing the second story back so that when you look at the from from the street it does appear like it's not as tall um, so anyways we got started with the with the design of the house 
And uh, I think the, the main issue that we're disagreeing with is this compatibility issue. And, and I, I sent a letter, and I think you, you got copies of my letter, but I just summarized what I, what I said in the letter. The, I know this is the biggest house in the, in the 300 feet. Square footage-wise, we are the biggest house. But I've always said, and I'll say it again, uh, the way the house, it, I can take a small house and make it look big, and I can make a big house and make it look small. I think the house at 1360 looks big, um, but square footage-wise, it's much small. It's about 800 square feet. I'm not sure how many. It's uh, quite a bit smaller than our house, the, our proposed house. Um, The other uh, issue was the, the two-story. The, technically, there are actually three two-story houses in this neighborhood. Uh, I have pictures. My client just brought me, because I can't go to the backyards of people, but my client brought me pictures of 1339, which is directly across the street from us. Technically, that's a two-story. Uh, it has outside stairs into an attic that's been um, converted. Um, I can just pass that around. It, it's not illegal. There's also the 1314 Virginia, which is a split level, and um, that technically is also a two-story. And but I accept that, as far as two stories go, it's not a, doesn't have the same impact as the 1360 Virginia as a two-story. However, the same comparison that you make between a split level house. Uh, which is not really a two-story, and, uh, and the 1360 Virginia, which is a true two-story with the walls going up, you can make the same kind of comparison with our proposed house at 1340 Virginia, uh, because you, our second story is pushed so far back, in a sense, it's like doing a two-story. I mean, it's li like doing a split level, because it, it's so far back, you don't get the same effect that you would get uh, from a real two-story house as 1360 Virginia. Um, the architectural style uh, has been modified uh, in our second uh, submittal, and that's, that I think is compatible. There, there is a couple of houses with uh, exposed uh, rafter tails and uh, tile roof, and I think that's compatible with, uh, with the neighborhood. Um, Landscaping. We have, if you look at the landscape plan, you'll see we have a lot of trees, uh, uh, especially in the front, 36-inch box, 48-inch box trees. Uh, when they're planted, they'll be 12 to 16 feet tall. And as you know, in a few years, they'll reach maturity and they'll get even taller and completely screen the, uh, the two-story house. And also the sides, if you look at it, we have, uh, in addition to the existing hedges that are there, we're, we're proposing more landscaping on the sides to, um, to screen the house. Um, as far as the, the appellant's comments, I just want to say a few things about the issues that were raised. Uh, compatibility, like I said, I guess we just don't agree on the definition of compatibility. That, uh, I think to say that uh, let's not have any change so that it will be compatible is not right. I think true change is when you uh, get improvements as long as it's positive change, something that, that's designed well. Um, as far as review of the drawings, um, now it's been three months since the last design review hearing, so I hope everybody's had plenty of time to review the, the drawings. Uh, as far as the attached garage, uh, we talked about this. I, I think I talked about it the last time. Uh, doing a detached garage, currently there's a detached garage, and detached garages are typically right on the property line. There's a lot of these homes. Even if you look at the, um, the aerial, you can see they're right on the property line. So what the next-door neighbor gets is a 20-foot by 9-foot wall that, that's right on their property line. By doing an attached garage, the, actually you get the benefit of a six-foot setback, and that's landscape. So in a lot of ways, it's better. And the disadvantages of an attached garage is that you see a 
double car garage door, as you do at the 1314 Virginia has a double car garage door. That's the split level house. Uh, and that doesn't look good. So, so what I'm proposing takes the um, best of both, and because we have the six foot setback, but I push the garage so far back, and because of the shape of the house, it's kind of a C shape. So the, you only see half, if you look at the front elevation, you only see half a garage door, because the rest of it is behind the house. Uh, and that's the issue that was, I think, uh, some of the, uh, somebody was raising earlier, is how come you see it in the perspective and you don't see it in the uh, street profile? It's because the perspective is taken at an angle, so you really get the full uh, garage door effect. If you were, let's say, standing at the neighbor's yard and looking, but if you look at, looking at it from the front, you don't see the whole garage because it's so far back, and it's behind the house. Uh, but it is an attached uh, garage. Now, yes, we can explore a detached garage, but I think if you can uh, achieve the effect that a detached garage has, which is uh, almost not visible, and if you look at the, the front view, you can see what I'm talking about, the, the, way, the way the house is in that front view, it, you almost can't see it. If you can achieve that without having a detached garage, and in addition, you have the, the setback landscape instead of having a, a wall on the property line. I think that's a better solution. That's just my opinion. Um, oh, there was a, a point raised about a 13-foot separation. If you look at the um, aerial uh, plan again, the 13-foot is only at, at one point. Uh, the rest of it sets back. Um, and I, I show that also in my sections. If you look at the... Uh, the longitudinal section showing the two lots. I show the closest point and then when the, um, the house sets back even further. Uh, and that's for the first floor to the garage, but the, the, the second floor above the garage is 19 feet away from the property line. So that's quite a substantial setback for the second floor. Um, like I said, we have a lot of large trees, infill housing. Uh, again, uh, I don't think this is too out of place as far as infill housing. We have one really large, uh, not large, square footage wise is not large, but it looks large at 1360. And then we have a split level house. This one is a two story house, but it doesn't really look like a full two story house. So I think it, I, I think it is appropriate as far as infill housing is concerned. Um, the 28 foot height, again, as a two story house with, with 10 foot ceiling heights, um, I've done everything I can to minimize the height, but when you get to a two story house, you want to have at least 10 foot height uh, for a new house. And so we end up with 28 feet. However, um, the picture that you see is accurate. The, the reason, if you scale it as the, the appellant scaled the houses and then came up with a 22 foot, the reason it looks that way is because it's, it's in perspective. The second story is, uh, what do we say? Nine. Second story is pushed back, um, well, it's 44 feet from the front elevation, but I don't know, maybe about 10 or 15 feet behind the first floor. And because it's pushed back, as, it go, as you look at it, it, it looks like it's shorter. That's perspective. Um, if it had been a full two-story, it would have looked 28 feet, and you could have scaled it. But because the second story is pushed back, it doesn't look as tall. Um, as far as the balcony, um, the, um, and again, my, my client just handed me some pictures of what the view is from the balcony, the roof of some of the houses and uh, the auditorium, uh, I guess it's the school auditorium behind the, uh, in the back. That's what he sees. So um, I don't think that should be a problem as far as privacy, but if you think it is, then we can mitigate that. Uh, I think it's a little unfair to compare it to uh, that other house uh, that where the picture is. The reason I say that is that lot is only a 45 foot wide lot, and this is a 72 foot wide lot. So the balcony is in the center, and so you're further away from the side property lines than you would be on a 45 foot wide lot. Um, 
I think that's about all I have to say. I just, um, you know, if if there if there hadn't been a house, a two-story house within 300 feet, I would understand. Or if the council directs us to change the ordinance and for compatibility consider only the house on the left and the right, I can understand. But since we're looking at 300 feet and there's already a two-story house, I don't understand how we can say that a two-story is not compatible. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are now going to go into other comments. So the first person I'm going to call is a neighbor, Oscar W. Forgive me, Themis. Faisal. Faisal. Mr. Faisal, you have five minutes for your comments. I'll try and do it. Thank you, sir. Uh, Let me get it Thank you. Do we want to read his address? Does he need to state his name and address? As long as we know that he's a neighbor within 300 feet, that's fine. My name's Oscar Faisal. I live at 1328 Virginia Avenue. Uh, I'll try and answer... You, you have my previous letter where I set out my objections and that the uh, meeting should have been canceled. They didn't give us enough time. Uh, I think the staff indicated that uh, there were just some uh, uh, slightly review, re revised plans. Uh, we didn't have time. Three minutes, one set of plans uh, to look at it. The um, staff stated they hadn't reviewed the plans completely. Uh, they had not posted them. Uh, the meeting just went on and everything was ignored at that meeting just to pass the uh, the de design. It was completely out of hand. As I say, the, 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 mat the meeting should have been canceled because they didn't follow or have even proper procedure. Uh, you have that all in my other plan. So I wish I could take shorthand and answer Mr. the architect's uh, presentation, but then it would take 15 or 20 minutes to answer all the arguments. The architect, Mr. Novarian, oh, incidentally, the last time I was here, I had double space type, and my hands were shaking so much, I couldn't read it, and I put it down on here, and my eyes wouldn't focus with the glasses. I had one heck of a time, so this time I have big print. The architect, Mr. Novarian, has used an 80-year-old home in the north end of the block to try and justify a two-story new home in the middle of the block. It's sort of ridiculous to pick that old, old home that was built 80 years ago and houses before and after were all single-story and built around it. More than a year and a half past it, Passed, has passed since the first application was made for a two-story home and a new plan filed with the Design Review, review Board 2. In all probability, any further delay in filing would have prohibited or reduced the approval in view of the changes taking place in the ordinances passed by the City Council. The neighbors object not only to this two-story proposed structure, but to its overall effect and consequences of change and destruction of the neighborhood character. The architect and the design review board directed their emphasis at the two-story house design and ignored its effect on the neighborhood and the advantages of a single-story home. 
it has been pointed out that the lots on Virginia are extremely large, 72 by 202 feet, which is over a third of an acre. Mr. Norbarian is a well-respected, competent architect who is capable of designing a single-story home of 3,400 square feet with a detached garage if his client so instructed. This is in reference to Mr. Norbarian's statement that he could not build a single-story home unless the garage was placed in front or attached in front. If a two-story home with attached garage at the front is built in the middle of the block, it will open the door to other possible attempts to build similar homes, citing the structure now under discussion. Our driveways and detached garages would be a thing of the past, and a hodgepodge without consistency would result. The beauty of our Virginia Avenue neighborhood would be gone and its integrity destroyed by the erection of two-story homes. These previous actions prompted the people of Glendale, the Homeowner Association, and the City Council to stop the neighborhood destruction and pass new ordinances to guard against it. <coughs> Why the Design Review Board, too, did not consider the changes to the small classic homes and chooses to flaunt their power is beyond belief. You gentlemen, I will, got a minute? Please wrap, it. Please wrap it up. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you gentlemen on this Board of Appeal and as members of the newly constructed Design Review Boards have the right obligation to take into consideration the directives given by the City Council to, to maintain the neighborhood consistency and compatibility. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next speaker is Selma Basrani. Okay, Doak. Please state your name and address, please, for the record when you get up here. Selma Basravi, 1333 Virginia Avenue. Actually, I'm the neighbor right diagonally across, so when I wake up in the morning and look out my dining room window, I see their home. And when I heard of this project, believe me, I could not think of anything but positive on energy going their way. For somebody, I'm also a realtor in Glendale, and living right across from them, my husband is the one that sent the letter, Habib Basravi. We are both totally supportive of this growth. I do believe in improvement, not just from a realtor's perspective, but as a neighbor. Um, I sell homes in different neighborhoods to compare the old world charm, old is gold. It's very close to my heart. And I do sell um, in cities like South Pasadena, La Cunada, La, uh, and Glendale a lot. And I do believe in keeping the integrity. I don't see this home taking away that integrity from our street. I do believe it's going to bring a lot of value. And above all, what is this, the American dream? These people are trying to fulfill their dream. Um, to be honest, if I was building that home, I belong to a neighborhood where there was some opposition I would understand. Do this, do that. But it seems like from the original plan, this poor house is getting, now the garage is being pushed back, now do this, now do that. At the end of the day, I don't even know what it's going to look like because it seems like we'll be planning the house for this owner of this home as neighbors. Um, I feel very strongly that they should be allowed to build a two-story. Coming from my own generation right now, the way I look at it, for me, not even talking to design review, laws, rules, and regulations, simple. I walk into that street, I see a two-story home, I see an attached garage, and I say, hmm, why can't I build one? What is so different? So what if that house is standing there for 80 years? How, do, how can you differentiate between me and them, go tell them to start making the changes. It's not hard to take down stucco. Make it one story. Go build a garage at the back. Take away your the split level home and do away with your attached garage. How did they stand there and these people can't fulfill their dream? They're not doing anything different. They're not bringing a... Look at American on brand. Big, fat monstrosity. We have nothing but positive things. It's bringing newness to the city. It's bringing in value to the city. 
Personally, I think this is going to bring a lot of improvement and value to my, my street. I really do. I feel very strongly about this. Um, I think that's about all the notes I have. But honestly, from the way I look at it, just simply black and white, um, it, it's just it just takes away from the fun of building your home. Good God. It's people I've seen. Pe I've been selling home for 12 years, and I see this big monsters going up in, Glen, uh, in La Cunada, in an old, seasoned, valuable, rich neighborhood. We have a beautiful neighborhood in Glendale. I'm very proud to be living in Virginia, and I'd be even prouder when I see this home go up. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Sarman Arusian. Very good. <laughs> now we're going to hear something intelligent. <laughs> Please state your name and address, Sarman. My name is Sarman Arusian. I live at 1340 Virginia Avenue. Hi, Sarm. Wait. Ma Hi, my name is Sarma Mofsasian. I am Sepa Mofsasian's son. I am in fourth grade and I have a long year t to go for finishing high school. This neighborhood is my future. That's the first reason I am agreeing to build the new house. And all the other pe people are wrong because my dad has been working a long time to do this. And I want to do this too, so I hope you people will let us. So I could have a good life at that house. And I like my elementary school, middle school, and high school. They're all very close schools. And I want my life to change because Without changes, life is really boring. Thank you. Thank you, Sarman. Thank you. Okay. And now we have uh, five minutes for the applicant to rebut. Correct. Uh, that would be you. It would be uh, first, um, according to standard procedure, it would be five minutes for the applicant and five minutes then for the appellant. Okay. Yes, please. As far as the 80-year-old home, I, I think the fact that it's 80-year-old, it's even more of a reason that shows we we are compatible. If the people that moved into the neighborhood after that 80-year-old home was built did not want two-story homes, they wouldn't have built their homes. I mean, that home was there, then the one-story homes came, and and it's been there for 80 years, and there's been no problems. We're trying to build something that's less massive, more landscaping, and um, so, I, again, I, I, I don't see how we are not compatible. Uh, th as far as the first application that was filed, I wasn't the original architect then, a year and a half or two years ago, however long ago was that. I, I was not the, I'm the new architect. So it's a new, these drawings are by me, but the previous application was not by me. Um, effects on the neighbors, I am very um, conscious of the effects on the neighbors the whole time I'm designing. I'm not only designing for my client, but I'm also designing a, a project that would not, you know, have too much impact on the neighborhood. I tried to accommodate everybody. That's why the house has been pushed in from the sides, from the front. I've done everything I can to to keep everyone happy, keep the neighbors happy, and give my client what he wants. Um, we did do plans for a one-story home. Uh, we handed those in. It should be on file. Uh, it just, to me, if you want my opinion, it didn't look as good as our two-story. Um, I think there's just more you can do with the two-story home as far as playing with the masses and the roof lines. And, and so if you're building a new home, I don't think my client should be forced to do that if he doesn't want to. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and then five minutes for the appellant. Thank you. We tend not to look at the neighborhood from the standpoint of monetary value or if this improvement will raise the property value so much. Uh, we look at more from the standpoint of, as I've mentioned before, we like the openness. Uh, we like the continuity. 
and we just don't uh, look at uh, neighborhoods probably from the same aspect that a real estate person would or someone uh, with uh, a sort of shorter term horizons. Most of us have been there many, many years. We're not going to sell our house in the next year. So we, we tend to uh, value it on the basis of our privacy, the openness, the open feel of it, and the fact that we've just been very comfortable with it for a long time. Uh, we have neighbors that have been there over 50 years. We have three instances when children have either bought or inherited property from their uh, parents and have continued to live there. So uh, people have been very comfortable in the neighborhood as it is, and we don't object to change. But, gee, try to keep it compatible with what we've got. We'll all enjoy it more. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, I think it's time for the public portion of the comments to be closed. So we close the portion. Well, I want to thank, for me, both speakers. I've been on um, AARPs for the last four or five years, and I can't remember the last time arguments have been posed so well, you know, so well and so articulate. So I want to thank you guys both. Okay, anybody want to start in some of their comments and what did they see and some of the thoughts that they've been gathering as we've been hearing? Maybe since this design review won, it should be your chance to start fresh and... Okay. If you oh, yeah, think yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll jump in. Okay. I'll, yes, Brian. Um, I live a few blocks away. In fact, earlier on I wanted to make sure I was outside the 500-foot zone and the I guess I turned out to be some here. Um, th there are a couple of issues, and, and I'll start with partly with staff in the sense, I mean, I hopefully in going forward from here, we'll never have an issue of, of when there is controversy on a project and the plans come at the last minute, that there is an adequate time for the public to make a comment. I mean, I think that, you know, partly here. Right. Um, I, if I can hold you on yes, for sir. a second, Brian, because I know that's an issue, and I think staff wants to speak on that. You had a comment, Bilia? Well, and just to... Give a brief summary. I mean, coming, it, it, coming. It, oh, I'm sorry. As I say, it's all water under the bridge at this point that's, for that. That's fine. I, I, but I'm just asking for the future for our standpoint, for at least on board one. Please, you know, help us with that. Um, the this, the other issue of the Brockmont Glenwood. You know, they are all under the Woodlands thing. I live in Glenwood, and I certainly know there's a big difference between Glenwood and Brockmont. So just you know, the price goes up when you get into Brockmont. Um, I live in Glenwood. I understand the streets. Spent a lot of time on, on, on Virginia because my children all went to school. Used to walk down there a lot. Um, I have a problem with a second story house in the midst of a bunch of single story ones. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of start this off with um, the house was built 80 years ago. It's there. When you, when you actually start comparing the floor area ratios here, it's uh, about 75% larger than all the other houses on the street currently. So that that's a, to me is a big jump. Now, compatibility, I, I know um, Mr. Naravian feels that size or size is not necessarily part of it. I think it's a well-designed house that he's come up with. I just don't think it belongs in this lot. Um, the, it's an elephant, no matter how you, how you put some balconies on it or move it and shape it and lay it and get to lay with its head or its butt towards it, it's, it's still an elephant laying in the neighborhood. Um, I appreciate how he tried to tuck the garage, and, and I've noticed this is about the third project I think I've seen that you've come up with. This is every one of them has had a garage in the front. I live in a neighborhood a few blocks away where there's the only houses that have garages on the front are ones that have been remodeled back in the 80s, which brought forward homeowners' opposition and the idea that we need to get some control over this development. I'm not in favor of garages in the front. I appreciate the way he, he's tucked it. I think there's a, another project coming we're going to look at on our board today where there is a garage in the front, but it's turned sideways. So when you look at the front, it's not a garage door sticking at you. On a lot this large, there's a way to fit the garage in the back, just like the rest of the neighborhood. Um, so I guess um, what I had one other couple notes, actually. Um, the other issue is, uh, is neighborhood opposition. Um, Two-thirds of the neighbors are opposed to the project. Two neighbors, the applicant and one other neighbor, have supported the project. They're, they're, you know, I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't like mob rule, but you know what? You guys have been on these long enough, and, and I think you, I mean, I've watched enough. 
if the project is acceptable to neighbors, you don't hear from anybody. When you've got that many people coming up that are opposed to it, I mean, whether they're not here, but I watched the, they watched the meeting. There were, the lady next door was certainly opposed to it, and, and she's listed. So I, I think I can't support the project. I would like to see it either come back as a, as a single story with a garage in the back and uh, the, the, the square footage, you know, it, it is much bigger, but not as a second story. Very That's good. where I'm at. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Anyone else want to jump in with their thoughts and such? Actually, I was curious to hear what made uh, um, I, I just like to uh, mention a few points that were brought up by the opponent uh, with regard to the conduct of uh, our proceedings with the uh, uh, Design Review Board 2. One was about the house being in a group of seven houses, and we were uh, looking at the larger group of houses, and it's not seven is not a magic number. We we really went up and down the street, and we went to the location a few times. Uh, uh, I know a couple of us did because we wanted to make sure that we look at the the perspective drawing that was presented and make sure that uh, we're, we're we can we can see it. In fact, I went back there today because we're starting over, and I wanted to have a start fresh. The second thing is that you mentioned that uh, the the board didn't uh, uh, even talk about the height issue, and I, I have to say that's a misrepresentation uh, re of the proceedings that went on. Uh, in fact, the height issue was um, talked about extensively. Mm, our board member Malekian, in fact, drew a few um, drawings, and we talked about the height of 28 not being on the um, on the prop property line, and the distance from the property line of the to the first floor and the second floor, and how it set back, and so on. And uh, to just say that uh, it wasn't even touched upon, I, I don't think it's it's, uh, it's right for it to be on the record. The second, the other issue was the. Uh, the the fact about uh, the issue about the the um, the siding for a house that wasn't approved, uh, I think I would I would be interested in seeing the the whole picture on on that presentation rather than just a simple statement that um, I, I find it very hard to believe that a house was uh, or a siding was just denied based on. A sing single statement. So I, I would like to see, in other words, the whole presentation rather than just a statement with that regard. Um, so just um, those were just a few few things that I wanted to bring up. And, uh, w and also the biggest thing that I wish I had talked about last time was that uh, and this is true for not only for this occasion, but for anything else that I think one of the most important things that we are responsible here for is to really analyze the, the issues before us uh, as extensively as we could and talk about them, them as extensively as we can for, for a single reason, and that was brought up by Mr. Noravian and Mr. Ellis. Uh, and it's about neighbors um, remaining good friends and neighbors after all is done and said. Uh, for me, that's, that's the biggest value to a, to a good neighborhood. And that's what makes neighborhoods neighborhoods. So uh, my wish uh, in, in spending all the time that I like to spend here uh, is number one is to maintain great neighborhoods and great buildings, building culture in our in beautiful city of Glendale. And the next thing, which is an outcome of, direct outcome of that, is to make sure that neighbors, uh, after this kind of discussions, um, can see eye to eye, hopefully, after every, everyone has talked about all these issues, and uh, so that my my wish is that we can we can do that here, uh, and and uh, to be very 
in the interest of time and uh, be very direct, uh, when I stood there today and looked at the uh, the, the property, uh, what I did was also I went around and came back through the the street again, as it's a one-way street. And as you as you enter the street from from Glenwood, uh, which is the southern part, uh, I mean uh, side uh, going north, uh, as you as you come in, the first building you see on your right is uh, thir- thirty no thirteen. 14, which has been referred to as a one and a half story, and it really looks like a two story building. I mean, it looks, the mass sort of sends you a message that I'm a two story building. And then, uh, as I moved up between that building and the next, the 80, 80 year old building, two story building, is not that big of a difference in terms of the distance. And with the introduction of the third two story new building that we are talking about, I really don't think the impact will be that big for the neighborhood as a whole. And that's that's my opinion, as I've said it before, and, and I went back today again one more time to make sure that I feel really confident about it, and, and that's what I, I, I really believe, and I hope that um, others can see it in the same way, but that's my thank you, sir. My opinion. Anyone else want to add oh, some more thoughts on this? Yes. Yeah. The a um, uh, couple of things. Um, I think ultimately there needs to be, which is I think what's what's happening is there's going to be more guidelines in terms of what compatibility means. Because I think it's really unfair, especially for a homeowner or a neighbor to not know what the rules are and to have there be so much gray area that you get a conflict like we have here. I mean, there wouldn't be a conflict, uh, as the architect said, if if there were clear guidelines in terms of when you could and when you couldn't have a two-story. And I think it's it's very difficult for this board, at least for myself, to say you can't have a two-story when the requirements are so gray. And I think there are other ones that are nearby, and I think it's difficult to say no. Having said that, there's a lot of different ways to do a two-story to minimize its impact. And I think that's the real issue because a majority of the homes, I live in Spar Heights, a majority of the homes are small. Some of them, I mean, my house was 800 square feet, 850 square feet. Any house that's built is going to be twice or three times larger than that if somebody's going to spend the money nowadays to remodel that house. And I think that's a condition for many of the homes in Glendale. You had lots of homes that were done... uh, in the 20s, 30s, 40s that are 1,200, 1,400 square feet. Whatever new house is going to be done is going to be twice as big as the other. So the the footage, in my mind, is less of an issue in terms of how you do it. You could do story and a half. You could bring the second floor in. It's really how this imp- how this house impacts the neighbors. That should really be the guideline because uh, if you aren't obstructing view, light, or air to the neighbor, you know, there should be flexibility in terms of what the owner can do. So um, I think I am hard-pressed to deny them the second floor. I think he's done uh, things that I've also done on my projects where you bring the second floor in on the side, try to minimize its impact. Uh, he's stepped the front back. All those things are ways of minimizing the, the new, the change to the environment that this house is going to make. So... Um, and I think he had some good points. The fact that the detached garage actually would have more of an impact on a neighbor than an attached garage. So that's actually, there is a six-foot separation. That garage will have less of an impact than if it was detached. If mass is the issue, what you are seeing from the neighbor. So I I personally want to, I mean, I think if we looked at second-story houses in terms of what the impact is on the neighbor, I mean, there's practically no windows on the side of this house. You know, which is not the case on practically almost any other two-story house. So, you know, how you can say he, they haven't really gone the extra mile to minimize that effect, you know, it's, it, that's hard, I think, for me to say. I mean, that, you know, to have that little window on the, on the side of a house, I think it's tough, especially, you know, when you could have light on two sides, which really makes a room nice when you have one, two windows in the two sides of a, two sides of a room. Um, 
So uh, that's sort of where I'm at. I would say, though, uh, I know ceiling, high ceilings are nice. I, To be honest, I think that's one area where there could be a little bit of flexibility. I think the 10-foot ceiling height on the second floor is probably more than necessary, you know, and uh, I think that could probably be diminished maybe to 9 feet or something less. You know, maybe only a portion of the lower floor has a 10-foot plate. Um, but I do think that that is the kind of thing, in my mind, that would make a real difference. You're going to see a 10-foot wall where all these other walls are 8 feet. And I think that's the kind of thing that's going to make an impact. Because the second floor is set back. You're showing roof at that point. So you have elements that are one story on the front. So I, I, I think without clear guidelines that say this is not possible, I think it's hard for me to say no two stories. So I think with some modifications, I, I would be supportive of it. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Liu. I think a lot of things have been said by my colleagues already, and you know, I think they're pretty obvious. It seems like the the three objections that you were bringing up um, were basically the the review time or the lack of review time that you had on the previous meetings, um, the name of the neighborhood, and getting that right. Um, and the third one was the compatibility issue. Um, I think because we're now at the, sort of this meeting, um, I think the first two sort of are sort of, like you said, water under the bridge now. I think we've you've had a chance to review the document. You've had a chance to uh, voice your opinions about, you know. And I think that that's something that we should take note of in future meetings is that if it's not fully by the book, maybe, yeah, there is some – some reason to be able to hold that off and give it the right amount of time. Um, so I think that brings us to the third issue of compatibility. And like you were talking about, it's a very subjective thing. And I think the codes have been written so that it maintains sort of a, you know, a different perspective from different people. Um, I actually would not want to see a code that this specifically says, you know, this house needs to be exactly 20 feet and nothing else, and you got to bring it in. Because then I'd be out of a job. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be these boxes that we just manufacture and then just brought in, and every neighborhood looks exactly the same. And, and there's a lot of cities that have done that, and I, I think we see sort of the detriments of that. Um, so then that brings us to the issue of compatibility. And a lot of those issues, you know, there's massing, style of the house, uh, the colors that we might object to, uh, maybe the vegetation, how that's laid out. And I think in all of those, there's no real objection to them. It's sort of just the massing portion and um, the issue of two-story versus one-story. Um, and I, I think – hello. <laughs> um, I would just say that – I did go out there today, and I wanted to get out there earlier, but you know, but I, but I got out there today. I, I walked the neighborhood. Um, I saw the kids getting out of school, <laughs> and kind of the traffic that accumulates on Glenwood. Um, but it, and you're right. You, you guys are very fortunate. You're living in a very nice neighborhood, a very nice street, and I can understand why you'd want to sort of maintain sort of that aspect of it. But I don't know if this two-story is going to be detrimental to that neighborhood. I think that there is some precedence that's set with the, with the two-story. And if to say that it's 80 years old and therefore you should not count that, it's sort of, I, I can see the opposite part of that too. Well, if that was 80 years old, then I guess the single-story houses are not compatible with the two-story house. Should they all have been two-story houses then from there on? And so I, I don't see that argument as, as, as being as critical. Um, the two-story house that's presented to us now, I, I can see that there were steps taken to minimize the massing of it. The stepping back of 15 feet from first floor to second floor is going to make a big difference. Um, and you're talking about how when you were scaling it, it, it is going to seem smaller than a full 28 if it stepped back 15 feet. And in the same way that if you're standing across the street and looking at the uh, Hoover High School building in the back, that's like 30, 40 feet high, it doesn't look 30, 40 feet high because it's so far back. And so in that same perspective, you know, it, it is going to minimize the height of that. Um, and also in the elevation, if you look at it, you know, if you were to block off the, sort of like the 80-year-old house does, then you're looking at this huge mass that's sitting on the same plane as, as this. But what it's doing is 
it's setting back this way and this way to allow this portion to remain airy, as you say, in the house. And so therefore, this area here maintains the single story up to 19 feet coming in from that side yard. And so, and the same thing happens as you're going back from the site is that you're getting the single story, then you have to go back another 15 feet and then, so the only piece that's 28 feet is about that big and it's, you know, a good maybe 30 feet back from the beginning of the house. So I think the full impact of a box that might have the same shape is not there. It's been carved away at it enough that I think it, it will not kill that, the, that street. Um, now, um, I just have, I mean, the little suggestions that I would probably have is maybe try to cut away at this portion to set it back a little bit further uh, from, the sh from the neighbor, which happens to be the closest neighbor. Because I'm okay with this side because you do have the walk, the driveway that separates the masses from there. Uh, so that would be my only point of contention. Maybe, you know, if you would agree to maybe setting that back a little bit, I think I'd be okay with the massing of the house. Thank you. Any more comments, general thoughts that, can, that come after everyone's spoken a little bit and such? That's good. Okay. Okay, here are my thoughts. Uh, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. Um, the review authority shall ensure single family design that is compatible with the character inherent within the surrounding neighborhood. Nowhere do they talk about architecture mass, size, material, finish, and I like that. As a designer and as an architect, I think we're going in the wrong direction if, if we're trying to have a menu for putting good design together. It's like good design that, that fits all those elements, which is character, cannot be done in a menu like you're at a restaurant and you start putting those things in. And that's not what architecture is about. And I think that some cities that may have gravitated towards that, that sometimes newer communities which are planned, you drive through them and they tend to be a little boring. And I like Glendale, especially the eclectic nature of architecture that we see in these areas. But it better be good. It better be, it better work in compatible surroundings. And what is that? It's hard to put your finger on it, but when you see it, it works. Those thoughts for me are very complex. Um, um, I've been, on the board probably cumulative to close to six years and we've had a lot of discussion sessions, planning sessions, we've had field trips to see what that means, character um, and, and compatibility. Um, and I've learned a couple of things that have stayed with me. But here are just some initial thoughts. I believe that this neighborhood could be a word called modest. It's a modest neighborhood. It has a lot of land with modest homes. That doesn't mean bad homes or bad design. It just means that the size and the scale in relationship to the lots are modest. I think the gentleman mentioned that trees, open space, vistas, view. There's a character that you see in this neighborhood as you see in other neighborhoods. And I think that it's appropriate to call that these homes are modest and that other things are allowed to take also precedence. I believe this, this design uses another word, majestic. Not bad, not good, but it's a more majestic. It's a two-story structure. When you look at the volumes inside, which ultimately define the volume outside, we have a very grand entrance, vertical volume. Mike, you mentioned 10-foot plate heights. You mentioned we see spiral staircases. All those things impact the design that ultimately get reflected on the outside. Is that bad? No. But the architect and the homeowners have a juggling act to make those wishes to become a majestic home. Let's look at the site plan. You know, there's different orientations. You know, you have you have access design, you have sprawl, you know, all those things that we learned in school and stuff and practice in our own business. But you can see that there's a orientation right down the site, and then you build from that with the pool. The, so this house has a the cabana. All these things that are being done to this house, I don't think is consistent with what we're seeing in the neighborhood today. Is that bad? Not at, not for me, it is not bad. For me, it is good design. There's everything about this, I see it as a good design. But we're empowered and have the authority to ensure that it's compatible with the character inherent with the neighborhood. So again, some of the things I learned, and I'm hopefully not getting too long-winded, but, I, but I, we, we, I've seen a lot of things, is for me, one of the things that's compatible is the materials. Often, you see 
doors and windows and eaves and, and surrounds that are not compatible with the older homes and the method that they built those. Wood windows that have styles and rails, doors that are of wood, eaves that are of wood, surrounds that are not of foam. The materials are, for me, a very important part of the character of the homes and the neighborhoods. I th believe when I look at the material list that these materials are of a high grade. Okay, so that works for me. Um, another one that lessons learned is good landscaping. If there's a good landscaping thought that's not designed to hide a bad design, but complement the good design and work with it, I think that this landscape plan is actually significantly better with the in inherent landscape plans that we have in this neighborhood. So compatible, I think that it's actually an improvement in it and enhances the neighborhood. Um, it's always hard for me when the design is good, which I think this design is a good design, to make decisions on whether it's, it's going to work in the neighborhood because there's so much good that we're looking at. Um, a comment that I think Michael mentioned is that the design, because it's taking a majestic approach to it, has 10-foot ceiling heights, and it's the same. I don't think that if you I, – I don't think that that really is that compatible to the neighborhood, except for that one home. I would have liked the architect and the homeowners to have considered multiple plate heights for this home. It's yeah. part of the Spanish revival, Santa Barbara revival, where we have multiple plates. So when you look at the home, you don't have just one plate height. Imagine if this, why does this plate need to match this plate? What if it's a little lower? Yeah. What if this plate? So I think that there could have been a little bit more tweaking to a good design continuing to refine it to be more compatible so that when you look at it, it has a little bit less of a box-like feel, although it's a very good design in my opinion. So there are little things. But you have a little trellis up here. So there's this good design. Um, the comment concerning the existing home up here, which is a two-story house, and when you drive down the street, it does jump out at you. But it's got a detached garage. Maybe that helps it because it helps even more separation. And now the structure behind it is a two-car garage. It's on the property line, but so is everybody else. So I think that helps this design. Imagine if this design had a two-car garage in front. It would have more of a visual impact. Um, I like the way that, this, that the garage, although forward, is of a single-car garage design. Often you see a two-car garage plopped on top of it, or you see that this structure is the minimum setback allowed, and you have structure here. The architect has obviously considered how it looks adjacent, and here's how it looks adjacent. Nice little peekaboos here. Um, so anyway, and this is actually the first time I'm seeing this design, but I remember way back when these people had another designer, we had made some comments about it, and I looked at the notes, and I remember me saying it, consider a single-story home for this neighborhood. I think that was back in 2004, 2005. They continued two-story. Landscaping plan is very good. The little walkway, I think, is very con um, consistent with good design, and so on and so forth. Um, I live in a two-story house with single-story homes around. I think I work. I think that, in general, this house works. Could it be better? Would I like to see the garage in the back? Yes. But all in all, I think the design is good. I do want to say, though, I do have a fear that once we establish a two-story house in this neighborhood with a garage in front, It'll allow the precedence of future two-story houses with garages in front that may not be designed as well as this one. And we need to be careful because for future, we may struggle with poor designs that are not compatible with the inherent quality and character of good architecture. And they're going to say, but we've got this one. And, we're gonna, and then we're going to struggle and say, yes, but your design is weak. Your design is poor. So... We're, 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 we've got a lot on our hands with this project, and, um, and I think all the comments that we've all said are so good and so constructive to, that we're struggling with a design that's going to be a home that could have potential for future, but is it, is it inherent today and does it match the character we're looking for today? Okay, and those are my comments.
Anyone else want to add some more thoughts and stuff before uh, um, we wrap it up? I just like to point out something that you just mentioned, and in fact, in our the uh, January 31st meeting, uh, I I brought up the same issue, and I instead of modest, I used the picturesque aspect of this neighborhood that uh, there's a humble quality about it, and then uh, I referred to to the <coughs> sign as was presented at that time as a, somewhat of a heroic in nature because of the same two-story space and how it comes through in the elevation. And the next time around, I think uh, that's where all those setbacks started to be even more, and then the, the entry started to become less of an obtrusive kind of a larger columns and, uh, you know, if you compare the two. So I, I think that comment is very true. and. Uh, and I think the architect made some attempts to make it better yeah. in the second round. Any more thoughts and stuff? I would say I, I agree with the things that you were saying. Just um, I would say that we should not not approve a good project in, with the fear of something else happening. We just, just stay as vigilant as we have been on these projects, on the future projects, and let that take care of itself. Good thinking. So if anyone is out there thinking about adding, these are good, <laughs> comments. These are good comments. These are good thoughts. <laughs> you know, and, yes, uh, unfortunately, right. it doesn't work that way. You know, I mean, <laughs> the, the, the rules are the minimum. And the minute, you know, and i got to to keep using now, when the camel gets its nose it's under the tent, there's an 80-year-old house in the street, which we're being told, there's the example why we should be able to do that. On a house that was probably the first house on the street, the minute you allow the, you know, the second stories, the, the garage is in front, the next applicant, God bless, hopefully they'll be as good architect as Mr. Naravian, but they probably won't, and they'll be in here saying, well, you know what, you just allowed it over there on Virginia, or it's down the street here. We, we think we deserve the same thing. It's America. We all should have the same thing. And we, we'll hear it, you know. I make mean, a good point. Anyone who's ever heard me in the last few years concerning taking a detached garage to the front and moving it to the back, I probably have 99 times said I'm not comfortable with that. Um, so I hear you loud and clear. It changes the whole dynamics of the driveway, the vehicles, the, the views. Yet at the same time, I hopefully have tried to be open-minded. If the design is good, why should we... Why should we penalize this applicant with a good design about the fears that we may have in the future, as you're saying, Mr. View? Uh, it's it's hard for us, you know. If, well, I if think. The, <laughs> that's me? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> As we start, uh, I think you're looking at time, right? Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick. Uh, I mean, I would be open to deciding that it was detached. I think I could be open to that. But again, I think the issue for me is really the, the impact on the neighbor, which is really. In, now the house is set up maybe 12, 18 inches off a of grade. That doesn't need to be, you know, I think it's just the mass of the lower floor in relation to the other, which could really minimize the impact. So if those were conditions, I mean, I would be going for that. If you want to move let me Let me review, that. let me read what we have before us with respect to the options. Approve, approve with conditions. Now, I think we should be careful with too much design conditions mm -hmm. that staff may not be able or want to or we would not we should be looking at those design issues to approve the conditions which lower floor floor heights of modified plates and all that that may be too much to have as condition anyway so that's my thoughts or to deny or and then the last one is to continue to another AAP meeting for additional information if we don't have enough information so those are the options before us Okay, as we're time is running short, do we want to bring up a motion? Is that how we do it? To okay. approve, approve the conditions, deny, or if we need more information, continue to. From, yes. And also, um, just to add, the positive comments that the board made in regards to having the second story set back, to having the second story set back not only on the front elevation but on the side elevations, having the garage tucked behind the front elevation even though it is attached. I mean, these are all comments that we can include in the approval or approval of conditions approved. so that, that when we do have a case that's whether it's on Virginia or in the surrounding neighborhood that we can actually point to reasons why this particular alternative assessment panel 
voted in that direction and why they would Bring not be up. able to go ahead and utilize this case as a reason to grant any old two-story single-family home. Yet, nevertheless, as Mr. Ellis said, we will be struggling with this for a while. Yes. And though we can put that right. out there, we always struggle with and it. And again, the, the Design Review Board has undergone revisions and updates and hopefully improvements. And so the spectrum in which the boards are going to be looking at homes has tightened up, both in terms of now that there is an issue regarding privacy, there's more definition in terms of compatibility. So the board has been given direction in regards to these two items for, for future review. Thank you. Would someone like to bring a motion and see if we can have a second with um to the come from uh, I'll bring I'll bring a motion uh, to me. approve the project uh, with conditions uh, the conditions would be one for myself would be to take, take this portion of the of the house adjacent to this neighbor and bring mm -hmm. it back to either this line or even further in on the front side mm -hmm. um, in doing so the plan would basically would read like this. I mean, I think the bedroom could be put right here to work out. Uh, board member, you know, so this would be a, a setback on the second floor, yes, only on the, on the floor. north elevation. That one, the bedroom that sticks out the furthest. Okay. On the front, front corner. And the front corner or the entire second story elevation? Well, because there's two. Taking it back to the back side. To the back. There's okay. two planes on that side, just taking the front side and bringing it back either the same or further in. Okay. That would be one condition. Um, I guess the other condition was to lower the the top plate, uh, possibly the... I, the second floor, I think it would be nice if it was nine. I don't know that it needs to be ten. And uh -huh. I'm mean, just compatibility sake. So and as you look at it, the living room doesn't have a second floor above it, so... You know, that's pretty along high. the lines you were talking about, that could have a 10-foot plate, the rest could be nine on the first floor, but I don't know how you guys feel about that. I think we need to be careful about... That's fine. That's what we're asking. And just just thought, We need to be careful about how much that's we can right. do here. Okay. Uh, remember how about you we just lower the top, the top plate of the garage? <laughs> that one should definitely lower. I think that should definitely be lower. Okay. But I think the second floor, I, I think the second floor ought to go to nine, but that's just... It is nine. So it's Same 10 on the line? first floor? Oh, we can't it doesn't show on the plans, that's why I didn't. Okay. And you said two tens. I thought you meant ten. Okay. okay, so you're saying you're saying that the, the garage have a plate of eight feet, nine feet, ten feet? Probably nine. Nine's if okay. Because okay. so if it's two foot drop, then it's a lot. Okay. Yeah. One yeah, yeah, two foot okay. Mm -hmm. Any other? So nine foot on the garage and verify that the top second floor plate is nine feet. Yeah. Yeah. And do you want to set it up on a plinth? It's up on like a foot and a half, foot, foot and a half. Do you want to still do that? or? Again, I'm just thinking about the wall plane in the front yeah. That's the cost to the neighbor. If you look on the perspective, it really has a big face to it. So. Is this slab on grade, Franco, or elevated? The first floor, slab on grade? On the, on the north side, slab on grade on the south side. Oh, because it's there. But it's sloping. So it could go down. I mean, I'm just saying because you, that's really where it's making the impact is that. Okay. I don't know if we can do that. I don't know. I think we can. Staff is saying they're comfortable, and we have Stephanie now, who was not here before, so. Been watching from <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. Um, were there any other ones that we? How do you want to say that about the grade? For the finish floor, first floor, finish floor. We say six foot to grade on the north side, or not? Is that six inches to grade on the lowest portion of? On the north side. On the north side. Okay. Let's add that as part of the condition. Portion Can we do that? Side. Yes. Okay. The staff is saying they're comfortable with that. Okay. That will be looking at. And I think that's okay. it. All right. All do right. we so have a second? With those, and the second one was not a consideration. It was actually lowering or verifying the nine-foot plate height for the second story and lower if less than, if greater than nine. Um, lower the garage top plate to nine feet as well. And uh, six foot to grade at lowest portion on the six north inches. side. Six, six inches. inches. Sorry. Can you clarify the grade, um, the finished floor at grade for us? Um, if you look on the side elevation, I think that's correct. Is that in this garage side? Actually, it's a lower one. It looks like it's about a foot and a half out of here. Really, are you, you understand what finished the floor. comment is? Because I'm, um, I'm just curious, because it may mean that part of the site then gets... Lowered. It's lowered since the site is sloping up, so it I'm would be it lower. A, it's, a grade, it's all graded level at the building. That's what it's looking it's, on the plan. It's, 
but there's a slope. There's yeah, there's a, there's a slope to the site, so it might wind on? up on one side being lower than the the adjacent street. So Same. that's what I want to. He was showing a foot this on the north side. I was just saying if it didn't need to be a foot. Okay. That's the way it's drawn. That's the way it's drawn. Six sure. inches yeah. on the north yeah. side. Yeah. Okay, we'll make sure that that's noted. Good. That's just what he drew. Okay. Okay. We have those two con two conditions. And I believe that was a motion to approve with these two conditions. Yes. Do we have a second? Do we need a second for this? Yes, we would. Second. I have a second by Board Member Zarifian. Now, in terms of a roll call, this would be Board Member Ellis. No. Uh, board Member Yu. Yes. Board Member Zarifian. Yes. Um, board Member Garagos. Yes. And Chairperson Inswa. Yes. The motion passes four to one. And that concludes the agenda for the <laughs> alternative assessment it. panel. <laughs> and with that, can we close? Yes. And with that, we close our assessment panel. And at 5 o'clock.